This video is brought to you by Ridge Wallet, a slim front pocket wallet available in carbon fiber and titanium. With more than 250,000 sold, a lifetime guarantee and free shipping, get 10% off with the code GOLDFISH at RidgeWallet.com. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another Instant Deck Tech. So, as you know, we're still in the weird limbo for Ravnica Allegiance actually releasing. We had pre-release, the set is out online, but it's not out in paper. So next week, we'll actually have tournament lists to look at for Type 2 or Standard Tuesday. But for this week, we're going to look at another super fun viewer submitted list. And oh man, this deck looks just like my kind of deck. I love me some Quasi Duplicate, and we got some super sweet new targets and support cards from Ravnica Legions. This is Salty Quasi Dupla Ooze, and it comes to us from RFG. So thanks to RFG for setting in a super cool deck. A quick reminder before we break down Salty Quasi Dupla Ooze for standard. If you enjoyed this deck and you want to see it made to videos, take a minute, click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment, anything you can do to support your deck, because whichever deck is most popular gets a shot at being made into videos next week. So, Saltai Quasi Du Blues starts off with Biogenic Cubes. This is the sweetest new card for this deck. So, five mana, you get a 2 2. When it enters the battlefield, you also get a 2 2 ooze token. Then, at your end step, you put counters on all your oozes, and you can even pay four mana to make a 2 2 green ooze. So, Biogenic Ooze is a pretty good deal all by itself. I mean, assuming it makes it to your first end step, you're getting two three threes for five mana, which isn't bad, but that it can get really out of control if it sits on the battlefield. The important thing here is Biogenic Ooze is five mana, which puts it right on curve for Quasi-Duplicate Jumpstart Quasi-Duplicate. So this is what our deck really wants to be doing. You probably know Quasi-Duplicate. We've played it a bunch of times because it's one of my favorite cards in standard. You just copy a creature you control, and then you can jumpstart it from your graveyard to do it again for just three mana so what this deck wants to do is play a biogenic goose so then you go to your end step you get the token they become three threes next turn you untap you quasi duplicate biogenic ooze which is going to get you two more oozes then you quasi duplicate jumpstart the biogenic ooze which is going to give you two more oozes so the end result is going to be you have three actual biogenic oozes and you have three ooze tokens and at your end step you're going to get three counters on all of those so suddenly all of those two twos are five fives and it just spirals out of control from there so basically if it works out the way we have planned ooze into quasi duplicate twice on biogenic ooze we should just win the game we're gonna have just a massive board of five fives and six sixes that keep growing along the way so that's the primary plan of the deck we also have some backup ooze copying cards mirror image just three mana copies of creature we control is basically a creature version that's one half of quasi duplicate Replicate, and then repudiate replicate repudiate uh, i don't know how often we're going to be countering an activated or triggered ability it works well against planeswalker ultimates but mostly it's in our deck because the backside is three mana quasi duplicate again so we have eight quasi duplicates the good news is, we're not just trying to copy Biogenic Goose. We have a bunch of other sweet targets as well, but to get to any of them, we have our mana. So Biogenic Goose, it's expensive. Quasi-Duplicate with Jumpstart, it's expensive. So we have a bunch of early game ramp to help us get there a little bit quicker. Land where else just adds a mana. Incubation Druid adds a mana unless we can get a counter on it. Then he adds three mana, and that is kind of the explosiveness of this deck, is we have Stony Strength as well, which looks a little bit weird. Just one mana put a counter on a creature and untap it but with incubation druid this can let us do some absurd things starting on turn number three so let's say we have incubation druid on turn two on turn three if we are able to put a counter on it and untap it we're gonna have a ton of extra mana enough extra mana that on turn three we can cast our biogenic ooze which means on turn four we'll be set up for that quasi duplicate plan we were talking about otherwise we have some good removal ish quasi duplicate targets these are kind of classic quasi duplicate cards hosta shaker rather is Chupacabra, just four mana removal spells, great when we copy them, and then Dream Eater at the top of our curve to bounce something, surveil a bunch of quasi-duplicates, set up our draws. Then we have Thief of Sanity, which is one of our best card advantage engines. It does die a lot, but if you can get in even just a couple hits with Thief of Sanity and start stealing the best of your opponent's top three cards, it is a huge amount of value. It makes it really, really strong, and in this deck, thanks to our Biogenic Oozes, thanks to our fast mana like Incubus, 
Incubation Druid, we kind of really stretch our opponent's removal. They can't just sit back and wait for Thief of Sanity, because they'll lose to the Fast Man of Incubation Druid. They'll lose to a ton of oozes on the battlefield. So it seems like there's a better chance in this deck than most that Thief of Sanity will actually stick around to get in some hits. Otherwise, at the top end of our curve, we have Mildroth of the Grave Tide, which isn't great with Quasi Duplicate because it's legendary, but once it comes down, it gives us a way to just get all of our stuff back from the graveyard, recast our creatures, start generating value that way, so really nice on the top of our curve. Otherwise, we have a couple of cards that are not really directly part of our plan. The Eldest Reborn, just a really great value card, a good way to get back creatures that have died from our graveyard, pressures our opponent's creatures, their hand, and then Veroska Relic Seeker, a great finishing planeswalker, making tokens, blowing stuff up, eventually winning the game with the ultimate. In the mana base, we get one Memorial to Folly, another good way to get a creature back from our graveyard, a ooze that has died, a bunch of shock lands, some of the check lands, some basic lands. In the sideboard, we get a bunch of removal for mostly aggressive matchups. Assassin's Trophy cast down for the early game. Find Finality is a sweeper, also good in grindy matchups because it can get our stuff back from the graveyard. River's Rebuke, really nice, especially against token deck, but really just good at resetting the board. And then for more controlling matchups, we have Spell Pierce, Sinister Sabotage as counters, Drill Bit as our Thought Seize to attack our opponent's hand, a couple of Carnage Tyrants in case our opponent's trying to counter everything, and then one Assure Assemble. I guess this is to protect our creatures, kind of a weird sideboard addition, but I'm guessing the idea is if our opponent tries to kill our Ooze, we can uh, go and put a counter on it. Also works well with our Incubation Druid, is another way to put counters on things, and that is Sultai Quasi Dupla Ooze for Standard, and that's our instant deck tech for today, so thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.